Yes, it's Friday, day 12,662 of quarantine, but here we are, hashtag safer at home. Welcome to another episode of Day to Day with Dorothy. If you're wondering why I have on a sweater, it's because it's cold and I live in the Midwest. So if you could send your warm weather over here, plus sun, it would be greatly appreciated. Thank you, please, and thank you. So for today's Chitter Chat, you know I always like to do a little Chitter Chat as we get ready to jump in, give folks an opportunity to tune in. Uh, so first, let me jot today's topic and pin it in IG. So today's topic is Delegate, sis. I'm putting sus. But, you know, I, while that's like the new thing, oh my goodness, let's see. Well, at least my office doesn't look as crazy as it used to. Let's Instagram these buttons. And it's not like I have gigantic fingers. That's not it. I just don't be knowing what's happening sometimes. That's probably more accurate. All right, so today's topic is delegate sis, delegate sauce, right? Something that we all have to do, and it is a skill that we have to learn and ramp up. So a little bit of chitter chat, like look, I'm trying to figure out, but okay, so chitter chat update A, which wasn't originally on the docket, docket but I will share. So over the weekend, I will be doing what us chocolate girls do when we have um, added a little bit of hair to our real hair. I will be dipping this so that A, they don't unravel, but B, I wanna add some curls for excitement. And then I think by doing that, I will fiddle with it less because it will be doing what I want it to do in my head. But then sometimes I've, look, and then because of the camera, look, I just can't, I just can't. I don't know what side stuff is on. I just don't, I just wanted to just kind of, anyway, listen. If you tuned in earlier this week, I said I'm a recovering perfectionist. Nevertheless, she persisted, so we're still here. Um, so a little bit for today's Chitter Chat, Becoming, the Netflix special with Michelle Obama. Michelle Obama is my forever first lady. I, I said it, and that's where we'll just have to leave it. I loved the Becoming book. It just gave me so much life. It just gave me so much life. And I was so bummed when she went on tour. She actually came to Milwaukee because sometimes programming and stuff doesn't always come to Milwaukee. It goes to Chicago. So when it comes to Milwaukee, I really want to take advantage. But I was, um, my little bun was still small and you know, my business is still technically new, but it was a lot newer, and I just wasn't making consistent income at the time, and I just was like, ah, I wanted to go see Michelle Obama so bad. So Michelle Obama, <laughs> if, if, if you ever see this live, you're on my bucket list. I would love if you go on tour again, if you write another book, if you go on tour for the same book, you know, because Becoming is like the number five um, and on the number five slot in Netflix in the U.S., you know, I'd love to be, I'd love to be in the room. I think sometimes just being in the room can be the exposure that we need to take things to the next level. Um, I had an interview a couple weeks ago, literally like two weeks ago, and because of things going on in my <laughs> personal life, <laughs> And the way that that morning started, it was so incredibly challenging. And I think the universe, God has a way of just wrapping its arms around us and adjusting to what we need in that moment. So I had this interview and I was sitting on a panel and I was super excited about this interview. And when the day finally came, life was happening and I just wasn't my best self. And I, for, for whatever reason, right, nothing that I had done, but I just didn't get a lot of talk time in that interview. And I was just like, damn, like, this was an opportunity. I, I blew it. And in talking to um, a counselor who specializes in reevaluative counseling that gives you an opportunity to reevaluate 
how you're looking at things, your perspective, all of these things. You know, the thing that she shared with me was that the universe gives us what we need in that moment. And while I didn't have a lot of talk time, I was in the room. Um, and perhaps had I been given the amount of talk time that, and the amount of airtime that I'd normally have when I'm featured on a panel, I probably wouldn't have done that great because I wasn't super present anyway. So needless to say, being in that room was a game changer because I met an author who wrote a book called Start, um, Start From Zero. And his name is Dane, if you look it up on Amazon. And the book was, it's, it's been a game changer since I purchased it. And honestly, I think that's why I was in the room um, to meet him key key with him a little bit, get to know him a little bit better and find out about this resource that for me has been gold. So all of those thoughts as a result of watching Becoming. That was our, our chitter chat for the day. All right, let's see. Hi, Joanna. I got your email. I am going to respond. Thanks for tuning in for another episode of Day to Day with Dorothy. Shoulder roll, shoulder roll. Okay, so that's our chitter chat. Let's jump into the meat of what we're going to be talking about today. I'm your host, Dorothy Enriquez. If I have slipped into your feed and you're wondering, like, who is this? Or one of your friends sent a photo of me, like, oh, I watched this. You should watch. I'm Dorothy Enriquez. I'm the principal and founder of The Communication Strategist, a boutique learning and leadership development firm where I help ordinary people become remarkable leaders. Why be ordinary when you could be remarkable and if you're tuning in i know it's because you don't want to be ordinary sis no you don't let's see who do we have hi k, k williams wait listen k williams co-photo and kermaya thanks for joining we've got camera a facebook Ew, shoulder roll, camera B, Instagram, ew, ew, double shoulder roll. So if, if you're ever like, what is she looking at? That's why I've got multiple things happening here. So if you ever miss a day-to-day -day with Dorothy episode, and if it was a good one, it moseys on over to YouTube. So you can always click the link in the bio and click the TCS TV option and head on over to YouTube to catch the best of day-to-day -day with Dorothy. All right, today's topic, delegate sis. Look, are you feeling stressed? Are you feeling overloaded? You know how like those commercials start with those sicknesses and medications and they're like, are you a person? Are you breathing? Do you have legs? This is the right medication for you. But no, in all seriousness, if you're feeling stressed, if you're feeling overloaded, or if it seems like your career is stalling a little bit, it may be the perfect time to brush up on your delegation skills. And if you've been tuning in this week, this week has been about managing like a boss, right? That's kind of been the theme. Everything that I've talked about this week has been, you know, around this concept of management. And Sometimes when we're feeling super stressed, when we're feeling really overloaded, just kind of bent out of shape, a little burnt and a little singed and a little crispy, it's because we're not delegating, right? And delegation can be hard, especially if we've got a new team or we are newer in that management role. And yesterday we talked about the curve of leadership, AKA the leadership transition. So if you didn't catch that video, you can catch it on Facebook and then it'll mosey on over to YouTube. So here's the deal with delegation. When we are a newer leader, it's challenging to delegate because oftentimes that was the stuff that we really enjoyed or the stuff that we were really good at. And now to give it to someone else, it just kind of adds this layer of complexity and stress onto our plates and then we don't want to let go of the reins, right? And so the reason why delegation becomes important once we are in these management and leadership roles where we have people reporting to us is because truly, if we want to be successful, we can't do it all by ourselves. And more often than not, in today's world, in today's society, managers aren't just managers anymore. They're what we call working managers. And so they've got their own set of tasks that really, they're not what you used to do. They are different. And then you've got the task of managing the people who report to you. So you're going to have to, have to, have to delegate. 
But when we're in this leadership transition, that's one of the most challenging skills to learn because let's be honest, we don't trust people. I mean, we want to, we want to trust them. We want to give them something to do and we want to take the pressure off, but it's, it's just difficult to let go of the reins. So I want to talk about two questions that you can ask yourself and then a couple tips on how to delegate like a pro. Okay. So when it comes to delegation, I have worked with and facilitated a bunch of programming and classes around delegation and just really around the leadership transition. I have a whole course on the leadership transition to help people. Uh, because this is so difficult and it's this unexpected bump in the road because as an individual contributor, we're watching our manager thinking that we could run circles around them. We're watching our manager thinking that he or she is just not the hottest on the block. She's not the sharpest pencil in the pack. She's one French fry short of a happy meal. A little bit of that, you know, and so we're thinking, man, I could do your job way better than you. And then we get into it and as we wipe the sweat from our brow and clutch the pearls, sis, this is way harder than I thought it would be. Now I see why my manager was X way, Y way, or Z way. So when it comes to this delegation thing, it really is an art. And so there's two questions that we want to ask ourselves. Is there someone else who has the necessary information or expertise to complete this task? Who on our team can do it, right? And can we, is it possible to get them up to speed, right? So that they can do it based on their background, based on why they were hired, based on their skill set, based on previous projects that they've done. Is there someone else who has the necessary information or expertise, right? Because if they got the expertise, you can give them the information. If they've got the information but not the expertise, you can get them up to speed. And then the second question that we want to ask in this question set is, is this task something that's going to recur in a similar form in the future? If the answer is no, this is just not, I mean, pigs could fly and it's still not going to happen. And you are the most capable and competent to do it and execute with brilliance. Fine, do it. But here's what I'll say. I've worked with hundreds of man, hundreds of managers. It is often a recurring task. And here's what they tell me in their, in their coaching sessions. Dorothy, it's going to take me so long. In the time it would take me to teach them, I could have done it twice. Right, but in the two times that you did it, and the 40 more times that you're going to do it, you could have taught them and then gotten it off your plate altogether. Yes, I understand what certain things, certain tools, apps, programs, processes, um, it can feel a little daunting to have to train someone and help them get up to speed. But if you recall in yesterday's day to day with Dorothy, how I talked about preparing for that management role, document sis, what's your process? What's the procedure? What's the, you know, what do we normally do in this situation? Do you have it written up? Do you have it typed up? Do you have an admin who can help you get what's in here onto the paper or onto the screen so that there's some preliminary work that this person can do as you're gearing up to delegate. And then that's when you can step in and do a little additional coaching along the process. But here's the deal. If it's gonna be recurring in similar form or in the same form, that is your key to delegate. You as the manager, you as the leader, can't do everything yourself. And if we want to take a quick pause break, this doesn't just apply for all my corporate hustlers. This can apply at home for all my mamas, right? This can also apply in our businesses too. You know, like sometimes we don't want to delegate because we're holding on to all the elements so tight, right? But when we hold on like this, nothing can enter. So we have to learn to let go and loosen our grip. That's how you get like tennis elbow, golfer's shoulder, golfer's elbow, whatever. You got to loosen up your grip in order to be able to move forward and make some magic. So two questions that we'll be asking. Is there someone else who has the necessary information or expertise to complete this task? Second question, is this a task that's going to recur in a similar form? in the future. Those are two of our telltale signs to know, sis, it's time to delegate. And there are a bunch more, right? 
And if you want to learn more, you can you can message me. Hey, Sarah Noble. See, look, I had to put on my spectacles. See who was up in here. Hey, Sarah Noble. Hey, Biz Partner. Hey, Jana, my Jana. Mm, yes, y'all. Delegation, sis. Okay, I got my little notes here. So look, three things when we delegate. Because let me tell you something. Delegating when it's something that we need to work on it can give us that little you know that little heartburn right up and through here where we have to do some deep breathing got to do a little box breathing a little meditating because maybe we've delegated in the past and then it didn't go well right or we've delegated in the past and then we felt like we needed to pick it up and do it ourselves mm -hmm. which defeated the purpose anyway so three tips number one delegate responsibility and authority. Let me say it again. Let me say it louder for the people in the back. Delegate responsibility and authority. So this means that you're going to assign the task, not the method to accomplish it. Okay? Assign the task, not the method to accomplish it. And this means that you are empowering this individual to take hold of the project, the task, whatever. And then they're gonna bring you in as they need help and assistance. And then you'll have a check-in process, right? To make sure that things are coming along nicely. You don't wanna just leave them to the wind, right? You wanna use situational leadership and you wanna use wisdom, but you want to offload it and give them the authority that they need. Here's the deal, when someone gives you something, but then you have no power over the thing, that's micromanaging because you can't actually do anything. You can't breathe, right, without them being right by your side. You can't make a move without them being right by your side because you're not empowered. That's not going to work. Fair? Fair? So if we're going to delegate, we have to delegate responsibility and authority over the task and not the method to accomplish it. Number two, we have to clearly, and when I say clearly, I mean clearly. It can't be clear as mud to you, right? Clearly specify your preferred results. I cannot tell you how many times I've partnered with managers and fallen prey and victim to it myself, where the manager gives you a task, something to do, and they don't even know what they want. Ah, they don't know what they want until you produce something and then they look at it, that's not what I wanted. I hate it, start over, right? And that's the worst. We do not want to put people in precarious situations when we're working on our delegation chops. We wanna clearly specify what's the preferred result? What does good look like? If they're putting together a training program, good is gonna look like using the ADDIE model, right? The analysis, the design, the development, the implementation and the evaluation. And in each of these stages, I'm going to need, you know, a spreadsheet so that we know if people are executing with brilliance because this is going to be a global effort. Um, if we're launching, you know, an event, I need to see who the invitations are going to go out to. I need to see a straw man of the invitations. I need to see, you know, how many people we have on attending, who's on food, who's on decor, what's the budget, like, so that people know what is gonna be expected? Because the last thing folks wanna do is all of this work just to have the leader take a poop on it and that's gonna cause demotivation. It's gonna cause disengagement. So we have to clearly specify the preferred results. Last tip. I know, I feel like I, I am pre-heartburning for you because this is gonna be the tip that you were not expecting. You ready? Are you ready? Okay, here's the last tip. Brace for impact, Effie. If you're not satisfied with the progress, do not do the task yourself. I said it, I said it. If you're not satisfied with the progress, do not do the task yourself. That defeats the purpose. This person who wants to do a good job, who wants to excel, you're the manager, they want to make you look good, 
right? They want to learn. And if it's something that they've never done before, or they're trying to bolster their skills, just like you're trying to bolster your delegation skills, you doing it for them is only going to make it worse. And then when you delegate something else to them, they are going to use half of their behind instead of their full behind in putting in the effort. I'm just saying. So if it's not coming along the way you want it to, you want to provide coaching, you want to provide guidance, and you want to use situational leadership, right? And we can talk about that in another episode if you're interested. All you got to do is DM me, shoot me a note. If you know me personally, shoot me a text. We can talk about whatever elements of leadership, management, and communication that you want. But ultimately, when it comes to delegation, if it's not moving along the way you like, you cannot just step in. You can't just come in here and be one of the Avengers and just fix it all. You have to let them figure it out. They're going to need your coaching, development, and your guidance. Where are these spectacles? I see some hearts happening here. Yes, Kiera said, ready. She said, outsource. Yes, when you can outsource, absolutely. Jana said, that's a good word. Yes, a word on a Friday. Okay, day 12,662 of quarantine. But we're here, right? And we're learning these skills. So a recap, the three things in order to make this magic happen when we're delegating. Delegate responsibility and authority. Assign the task, not the method to accomplish it. Clearly specify your preferred results. And last but not least, if you're not satisfied with the progress, do not, and I repeat, do not do the task yourself. Okay, so look. That is today's episode. Delegate, sis. Delegate. And this doesn't just apply at work, right? At our corporate hustle. This also includes our home life. There's so many, Kira said, outsource. You could outsource stuff at home too. Are you kidding me? You could outsource meal prep. You could outsource laundry. You could outsource cleaning. You could outsource all sorts of things. Delegate, delegate, delegate. Because if you're feeling overworked, stressed, pressed, and you know all pushed in, it could be because you need to brush up on your delegation skills. Right. And as managers, especially as new managers, delegation can be a pill. It really can. But it can be done. You can do this. And if you need help, I'm happy to help you. I can absolutely help you with your delegation magic. Right. So here we go. If this video was helpful, if you've gotten some nuggets about the two questions to ask, when you're getting ready to delegate, trying to decide should I delegate to delegate or not to delegate, or the three tips, and then the last one was a bit of a, a bit of a doozy. This can be done though. If this was helpful, I want you to do something for me. I want you to share this video, right? And maybe you even share it with like a previous manager that you're now friends with because you know they struggled. But just be like, oh my God, sis, this was great. This was great. Hey girl, headed to network. Yes, for delegation. Oh, I'm headed there too. Um, thanks for tuning in. So yes, uh, if you like this video, please share. Hit the little paper plane in Instagram or the share button on the grant on, on, look. Hit the little share button on Facebook. If you are technologically challenged like I am sometimes, I will pose for you and make it easy. Get your camera ready so you can screenshot. Ready? Right? Easy. So you just screenshot that, put it in your feed, your story. Oh, I'm like, I watched this on delegation. This was great. I really enjoyed it. I think it would be helpful because you're a new manager. I think it would be helpful because you're thinking about going into management. So look, here's what I want you all to do. If you enjoyed this video, I want you to mosey on over to the link in the bio and click the TCS TV link and subscribe. Because when we're going live, right, sometimes it's hard to catch it when it's live. But TCS TV, if you click that little bell, it'll always notify you when a new video is up. And then you can catch the nuggets at your own schedule, right? In your own time and making magic. Thanks for tuning in, Outspoken Wifey. She said, done and done. Yes. So thank you so much for tuning in. I'm your host, Dorothy Enriquez. I help ordinary people become remarkable leaders. If you need help and you're ready to step it up, DM me.
I am happy to help you, happy to make some magic, and happy to find out how you can go from ordinary to remarkable. This has been another episode of Day to Day with Dorothy. Thank you so much for tuning in. Shoulder rolls for everyone who tuned in. Yes, for leadership on Friday, even if we're in quarantine. I will be back here on Monday when the little baby is napping. Until next time, y'all. Remember, everyone's a leader. We have to lead from every seat we sit in. All right, Facebook. You know you always get the last shoulder roll. Ew. Ew. Hey. Yes. Have a great weekend, everyone.